Hi there. This first data visualization comes from Kurzgesagt and is titled, Do we need nuclear energy to stop climate change? This is a 10 minute video from which I've picked just one three second long visualization. So let's discuss the context. This seems to be primarily for climate conscious global citizens and those without climate science degrees. However, I'd argue that a lot of scientists could benefit from this tour de force in data visualization and storytelling. This video received approximately 3 million views in three days, so it goes to show how much this kind of care can help with reach. The main goal seemed to be to inform viewers of why nuclear energy warrants consideration and to convince those opposed to nuclear energy that it might be necessary. This YouTube channel in general aims to increase accessibility of complicated data through visuals and storytelling. Data is shown in a linear video format, though there are some examples not discussed in this presentation that are partitioned. So let's watch the first clip. The variations between seasons don't make this issue easier. This visualization is of renewable power generation in California for 2019. This is three animated line plots superimposed on top of each other and animated asynchronously. Emojis, text and color are used to separate hydro, hydro, solar and wind power generation and no grid lines are used in the line plot. The purple background with two shades of blue for area under the curve may prevent colorblind viewers from separating hydro from wind, um, but emojis are excellent for identifying which renewable is which. Since earlier in the video they explicitly stated which emoji meant, they could have removed the text from the visualization in my opinion. The animation is quite erratic during, due to the clip being about three seconds long. Additionally, other elements of the graph, such as axis ticks and labels, are animated and bouncing around too, which increases the complexity and increases cognitive strain, all of which does not increase the accessibility. The animation does fit into a larger point that renewables alone may not be enough to reduce emissions, convincing the audience that alternatives such as nuclear may be necessary. For some recommendations, I would perhaps ensure that viewers have enough time to understand the visualization before taking it away. Animating graphs can be really useful, but it's overdone in some instances. Kurzgesagt has many examples of doing this really, really well. I'm just nitpicking here. Color, using color palettes that colorblind people will be able to access is also really important and should be considered. So let's move on to number two. The second visualization is from 3Blue1Brown's YouTube channel called Simulating an Epidemic. This is a 20 minute video from which I've picked one 20 second long visualization. The main audience are those who are mathematically interested people and or concerned about pandemics or epidemics. I'd argue, I'd argue that mathematics educators in general could learn a lot from this channel. I believe videos like this are the future of maths education. 3 blue one Brown is an innovator in the field of data visualization. This video has about four and a half million views in one year. The aims are to demonstrate the effect that public health measures have on in infection spread and to increase the accessibility of models used in simulation science and epidemiology, similar to Kurzgesagt. The focus of this video is an SIR model, which is used to model infectious diseases in simulation science. Data is shown both linearly in video format and partitioned visualizations of the same simulation. So let's watch the first clip. In these first few runs that you're looking at, Everybody is simply meandering around the city in a kind of random walk, and the infection follows the rules that we've laid out. So it doesn't look great. After not too long, almost everybody gets infected. On the left, we have an animated stacked area bar chart, which shows the proportions of susceptible, infected, and removed agents. And on the right, we have an animated scatter plot showing the 2D spatial coordinates of agents in a random walk. Identical color is used across both visualizations to represent the agent's status. A changing value of R is displayed under the scatter plot, which seems to be calculated at each time step. The narrator explains the behavior and significance of the simulations as it goes on. The animation is also sped up during the video, which is announced by the pulse of a um, fast forward symbol. Using the same colors across two visualizations reinforces that the two are linked and reduces the cognitive load. Red and blue are also intuitive colors to use and are colorblind friendly. Using gray to represent removed agents is also intuitive since the focus of the video is on infected and susceptible agents. 
the black background also helps direct focus to the coloured regions. The simulation clearly demonstrates the catastrophic effect of no public health measures for infection spread. Narrating and clear, crisp visualizations increases the accessibility of difficult things like SIR models. The R value has not been explained at this point in the video, which reduces the accessibility. For some recommendations, I'd suggest including the R value under the scatter plot only when it's been explained. The creator also assumes familiarity with stacked area bar charts, which may be excusable considering the target audience, but perhaps including a Y axis label or percentages proportions which may assist in increasing accessibility. The changing position and size of the susceptible infectious and so on is cool, but is distracting and superfluous. So perhaps a static legend or label could be used instead. Thank you.